It's $250 saying, I love watching AJ to Q every year, and I'm thrilled that I'm in a position that I can give as much as I can now. Big thanks to all the runners and everyone involved in this event. All right, folks, I have been given the green light. Here comes SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom by Shift. Good luck and have fun. Hey, everybody, I'm Shift here presenting SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Here are my co commentators and buddies. They'll introduce themselves right now. Hello, everybody, I'm Jared's Giants. So today we're going to be playing the 2003 Platformer and Collectathon released for the original Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation 2. Much like most Collectathons and Platformers you're aware of, this game has a main collectible used to unlock new areas, the Golden Spatula, so you're going to want to pay attention to those. We need 75 of those to complete the game to get to the final boss and win. And we routed this in such a way where we are collecting the fastest possible because there's no way to just skip to the end even though we can reach the door to the end early. So, the timing is going to start when I say showtime, all right? Three, two, one, showtime. And you'll notice we can already skip these, these cutscenes here. Let's go. This game allows you to skip the longer cutscenes, but there are still some shorter ones we can skip as well with some tech and glitches. These little shiny things we're collecting are actually literally called shiny objects. We use them to purchase toll gates, which can lead to golden spatulas like this. And this one in particular is going to be used to unlock the hub world, which will allow us to branch off and go wherever. So we're about to go on an adventure through Bikini Bottom with all references through the first three seasons of SpongeBob. So hope you guys enjoy, because this game is a wild ride. Yeah, and um, we're actually coming up on the first major glitch in the run already. Uh, typically, when you go out of bounds or fall off the map anywhere in the game, a hand will come onto the screen and drag you back in bounds. So we're actually going to be disabling the hand by entering a loading zone here while it's on the screen. And um, that'll allow him to jump out of bounds and reach plenty of areas that he shouldn't be able to throughout the run. And uh, right away after disabling it, we're coming up on the first instance where that's useful. Uh, there's a giant pit up here with a golden spatula in it at the bottom. And um, normally, if you were to try and jump in and grab it, the hand would stop you from doing so. But since we just disabled it, he should just be able to jump in here and grab it. Just like that. And um, another thing that's worth mentioning, uh, at any time in the run, you can pause like you just did and warp to a golden spatula that you've collected. So by collecting that one early and then yeah, working to it, you just skip a large portion of the first things I ever found actually around 10 years ago. If you've ever seen the speedrun history videos for this game, you'd know it's like, that was a huge game break for this game. And we are still finding stuff like that today that can be used. Yeah, so right here, we're actually coming up on our first example of a one-frame triple jump. So anytime that SpongeBob takes damage, there's going to be a single frame that exists between his damage animation and falling animation, where the game considers you grounded. So as you saw right there, he was able to input a double jump in mid-air on that grounded frame. So anytime that you see any mid-air grounded moves like that, that is a true 1 60th of a second frame perfect trick, as if you can't tell, this game does run at a smooth 60 FPS. Beautiful game, by the way. Yeah. Love the animations, the art style, everything is just so sad. Yeah. Beautiful soundtrack as well. Yeah. And uh, it's worth mentioning right here that um, you'll see him collect a sock at this part of the slide. Uh, those will give you one golden spatula. So he'll be collecting some of those throughout the run. And uh, we have a nice little intentional nice. death nice. here to skip a cutscene. That was nice. And uh, coming up here is another trick called Pat's Hammer. It's um, what we call a sliding bash. Basically, he's going to take damage from this robot, and he's going to use the momentum to bash up to this island and collect a golden spatula. Let's see. Uh, I got the longer That's animation. Okay. You, got the you want to animation. explain yeah. the animations, Jared? Yeah, so this is actually a good time to talk about this. In this game, there are actually five different animations after SpongeBob takes damage. And one of them is actually two frames longer than the other ones. So when it comes to doing mid-air one frames like that, 
uh, you actually have to delay your button press by a couple of frames. So it's important that he's paying attention to which damage animation he's getting because he's gonna have to react to it. If he does get the longer one, then he has to delay his input again by two frames. Yeah, that was an unfortunate situation where sometimes that does happen on that, tr that trick and it is a tiny bit inconsistent when you get the two extra frames on it. But for some of the other sliding bashes, we can actually adjust them on the fly. That one's tough though. Yeah. Just, uh, We're entering downtown, and uh, now would actually be a good time to talk about... <laughs> we need to bring some clarity to something. Some of you guys who watch YouTube and speedrun content may recognize a, uh, a disc with ketchup on it that showed up in your recommended feed at one point. Then that is this game. You might have recognized it. The, the infamous putting fingerprints on your disc strat to make lag clips work better. Well, we kind of did away with that because we realized as well that the lasers and other components of the Xbox, along with the disc quality themselves being almost 19 years old now, it's not going to be consistent for everybody. So it's much more competitive to allow people to download the game to the Xbox's native hard disk. So we play on the hard disk now, therefore avoiding all error correction that can be exploited. So no more uh, lag clip strats. So you won't be seeing those this run. But just to clear that up, because people always get that confused, we don't actually put fingerprints on any disc, or we don't have a disc now for that matter. Yeah. So glad that's all cleared up now. Yeah, you ain't kidding. All right, so you're gonna see in these little areas, Shift is actually going out of his way to collect some extra shiny objects, and that's gonna play a pretty critical role later. Uh, Shoy is gonna touch base on that in a little bit but we are actually coming up on another major glitch right here, and this is known as Spongeball Displacement Jump, or just SDJ for short. So you're gonna see this stack of Tiki's right here. It's gonna shrink when you're close, and it'll expand when you're far. So by storing the release position of the Spongeball on top of the stack while they're at their low point, you roll away and raise them, and then by exiting, you can actually use that displacement and convert it to vertical momentum, and by exiting the Spongeball and jumping on the very next frame, turns into a super jump, so we just actually skipped past the Sandy tutorial for downtown, and that actually carries directly into the next trick that we're going to be doing. Yeah, so that was called a Spongeball Displacement Jump, and um, this one is very similar. You use the same exact setup, but we are going to be using it through a loading screen, so it's called Vertical Momentum Storage instead. Basically, he's going to do the same setup, but instead of jumping when he releases from the Spongeball, he's going to pause and warp to the hub world and he will be able to jump and skip directly to the second part of the hub world. He basically just skipped the first major boss of the game that requires 15 spatulas to enter. Yeah, nice job, man. Yeah, this is a um, pretty big skip. Very flashy. Everybody always freaks out whenever they see that one. We got another big skip coming up after the tree dome as well. But in the meantime, we actually have time for a donation reading if uh, we want to get our oh, ways through. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We have $25 from AK Phenom that says, Good morning. My dad has stage four cancer, hey. so seeing the community come together for one another means a lot to me and many others. Good luck on the run. And what's your favorite part of playing this game? Hey, thank you so much, AK, especially for all the support throughout these years. You are the man. And I really hope that things go better for you and your family as well. Uh, my favorite part of playing this game is the satisfaction you get just from hitting all those crazy one frames, man. It is a wild ride. We got something coming up here too. We're gonna have some explanation for as well. Yeah, yeah so, thanks AK for that. Uh, this pattern of jumps that you're seeing actually is known as SpongeBall uh, storage. Oh. So by that would be cool. <laughs> by double jumping, uh, the <laughs> landing animation of a double jump actually. Uh, delays the SpongeBob transformation. So you might have caught on to that earlier during the VMS and the SDJ. You can actually just store that and pretty much activate it in any place that's reachable. So again, like Shift mentioned earlier in this case, we used it to skip past the final boss, which is usually locked with a 40 spatula gate, but we're actually in the last area of the hub already. But because this game is so linear, we do have to go back and fight the bosses, and there's very good reason for that. So we'll get into that later, but... Yeah, in the meantime, you'll notice that um, in early game, we also do a lot of these fights that give a lot of shiny objects. And uh, that's very good because we are going to be using 3,000 of them right now to purchase a golden spatula from Mr. Krabs. And um, one thing that's interesting to note about this specific spatula is that it's actually what we call a duplicated spatula. So even though we're buying it from Mr. Krabs right now, since we're doing it under some very specific conditions, we'll actually be able to 
purchase it again later. Mm -hmm. so we're going to see the counter update to 13 here just because visually we couldn't see it, but now we can. 13. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see how tight the uh, window for shiny objects is, so it's very important, like, early on that he was going out of his way to collect the extras. He only had, like, 30 extras, so it's a very tight window. Uh, this spatula right here, speaking of shinies, not only is it fast to do it this way, but we're actually skipping a toll clam by doing it this way. So at the bottom of that puzzle, there's a toll clam you'd usually have to purchase to access a trampoline. But if we can skip toll clams in this game, we will because it saves time on not only cutscenes, but it also saves shinies. Uh, we're actually coming up on two other one frames right here. This one, nice job, by the way. Nice, dude. This one utilizes the momentum from the block spinning and actually goes into a damage boost so he can get up there. And then this next one right here, this is a very, very risky one. Um, a lot of these jumps, if he doesn't get them on the one frame, he'll have to reload and do backups. Nice. Ooh, nice that was a very good dream. Yeah, that was a good Could've dream. Could have gotten the slide off there, but I'm just happy that we made it. Yeah, yeah you can <laughs> see all these things were, were crossing big gaps. If he does not hit the frames, he'll just void out and have to restart the entire level. Uh, so it's, it's, it's important that, you know, you get these one frames. And again, 1 60th of a second, it's, it's very small window. So it's all very impressive. There's a lot of stuff going on. You gotta, like, as has been mentioned before, it's you have to react to each of the five animations, even though you can tell which one's coming. You're also paying attention to the cycles and trying to think about them as they're going through, and you're reacting to the one frames, and it's just, it's a lot to manage. Yeah. So you gotta set up for sliding damage boost, too, with the frames. Hey, but that's why we love Whew. this game, right? Early game, yeah, right. <laughs> Most of the time. Mo yeah. All right. Yeah, so... <laughs> We're coming up on the first major boss fight in the run. This is the one we actually skipped earlier, uh, but we are coming back to it. This is a pretty long fight, so the only reason we're actually doing it is because it gives us the Bubble Bowl power-up, which we will need later to do a lot of major glitches and skips. Yeah, so until we're actually able to get that power-up, she's got you for three minutes. Three minutes of playtime. Yeah, so there's actually not much that can be done to save time here. Uh, but throughout the fight, you'll see shifts circling around Robo Sandy and getting her to follow him to specific locations in the ring. And uh, what that's going to do is, like, you see right there, he ran at her and she did her jumping attack early. There's just little time saves like that that make her attack cycles quicker. Yeah, even in phases two and three, they're going to be pretty similar where she's going to have her initial elbow drop. Uh, and she's going to follow around for a bit. If we lure her to a very specific spot on this stage, we can actually make her do the clothesline move a little bit earlier. And then by manipulating her to attack here, when we slam, the head will fly towards the scoreboard and we can get a quick hit. It's just a lot of little things going on in this fight that you might not realize, but it is all very like, carefully thought out. And there's a lot of stuff going on that people might not see. Yeah. A lot of people, when they get into this game and learn with the, the recent tutorial, they get surprised when they see that this is not an auto scroller when they reach it, because it's just much like most speed runs. There's a lot more depth than there seems to be in a lot of cases, and it's a lot harder than it looks. So, um, with that, we got time for a donation. Any, any on? Yes, we have a five thousand dollar donation from Easy Speezy, who says one of my favorite speed Whoa. games, and always good to see a GDQ. Good luck, Shift. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you so <laughs> much. Thank you That's, so much. We got to be closing in on two million. Right? Yeah, we actually have time okay. for a couple yeah, more. I think. We are closing on two million yeah, right get, now. I going. believe we are twenty-one thousand away right now, so we are getting there. Uh, Shadow of the Past donates Ooh. twenty-five dollars, saying, "I probably wouldn't be in speedrunning, let alone be a runner at this event, if it wasn't for all the work Shift put into building the Battle for Bikini Bottom community." So glad to see this game back at GDQ. Good luck, Shift. You're gonna kill it. Blow some mines. Nice. Thank you so much, man. man it's, it's crazy how many people are involved in this now and how many people have built this game up to be what it is today. It's gotten to the point where I used to kind of like stick my nose into a lot of different things and like try to help out here and there with a little stuff here and there, but there are so many people who are specialized and so smart and so good at what they do. I, I, it's so relieving. Like we really, we really built something beautiful here. It's not just a few friends playing the game anymore. It's, it's really, truly a community, and it's not going anywhere. So, really, really appreciative everybody, especially you guys who are helping. 
fund the research to defeat cancer. Maybe we can oh, get another absolutely. one. Oh, absolutely. There's so many wonderful sure, community yeah. donations here. Uh, Freezy Byrne donates $50, saying, them. Great to see Shift in the battle for Bikini Bottom back at GDQ after so long. Good luck on the run, and here's to 43 coming soon. Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, some of our practice runs, I was kind of nervous that it's going to be it, but <laughs> good thing it didn't happen offline when nobody could see it. But it's coming, don't worry. Yeah, so um, we're actually coming up on the hardest level in the run, Blue Lagoon. There's a lot of major skips and glitches that are going to be happening in this level, so keep your eyes open for those. Yeah, right off the bat, we actually have a little bit of interesting stuff going on right here. He's going to be jumping out of bounds and going around a cutscene to save a little bit of extra time. And, uh, you'll see there he did, now that we have that bubble ball power up, there's going to be a lot of spots like that one where we can just do little quick time saves like that uh, ball boost there. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. That's, that's a fan favorite, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Another little yeah. one frame to get the sock up there. Yeah. Gotta like that. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of crazy glitches throughout this level, so keep your eyes peeled. You might notice some of them. Yeah, you might see one eventually. Wait, did he just do a glitch? Huh? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't... I, I was in this turkey sandwich. I, I wasn't really paying attention. Oh, uh, whatever. Anyway, um... I don't know if you just saw it, he hit that robot on top of that stack of boxes there. Uh, what that does is it actually unlocks a spatula that you'll get from Larry later on, so it is important to hit that. And um, basically what just happened is he skipped directly to the end of the level. That island is supposed to be the last place that you get to. So by reaching that early, we are now going to be playing the entire level backwards, and it saves a ridiculous amount of time. Yeah, that's the classic BFBB. Playing a level in the reversed order. <laughs> yep, you're gonna be seeing that a lot today. Yeah, so now we gotta go play some carnival games. Yeah, right, so, a little confession time. When I was a kid, I was so impatient with the ski ball machine at Chuck E. Cheese. I used to just climb up there and stick my hand in to get those points, but now I'm paying the price because I speed run this game as a career, and <laughs> I'm stuck with this. Can you guys explain what I'm about to do? Yeah, so here we're doing SBA, or skee-ball abuse. So he's actually going to be getting a stone tiki stuck inside a very precise spot in the skee-ball machine. And once it's in there, he'll be able to lodge a bubble bowl inside of that tiki, and the bowl will actually be passing through the trigger for the machine's 30-point shiny reward. And this racks up shinies at a pretty absurd rate, as you'll see. So if this does go perfectly, he should be able to just multitask the rest of the level while the shinies count up. Uh, but it is very common that the ball pops out because there's a lot of physics things going on right here. So it's, it's looking like the placement's not the best, but we'll pray. Yeah, this is very much a reset point, so. Yeah, heavy run killer. It'll probably fall out. <laughs> If it does fall out, he can always yeah, just... Yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just take care of it in a bit. Yeah, that's yeah it's no problem. Yeah, but normally what we'd want to do here is multitask by having the points generate as we're doing all of this. Yeah. So this climbing here, I'd just be hearing 30, 30, 30 the whole time. You got some nice little movement, some platforming. You got the flags. Now we gotta really just go babysit this thing. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a very, very precise trick. Very tough to do yeah. under a lot of pressure as well. Uh, even if you do get the setup even good. Even if you do get Yeah, it's just very unpredictable. Very, very tough. Yeah, Shift said he was not going to shave his face until this worked, and as you can see... <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Well, <laughs> I think at this point, the beater is just part of the personality, so... <laughs> Yeah, so you can reference. see getting a ton of shiny objects right now. Yeah. Yeah, right now, see, we have, we're standing on top of it, so it can't really fall out at the moment unless it goes out through the front. Yeah, there is a setup. So we should be good. There is a setup that uses two tiki's that's way more consistent, but obviously, you know, in a world record level run, using one is going to be way faster than using two. Yeah. Dude, I love this song. This song it's is funny, out of all so our good. <laughs> All of our practice runs, this is probably the worst that's gone, strangely, but... Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just a little bit tricky here. Yeah. 
Just a backup. You can go for the little spatula skip. Nice. nice. Basically by so you can drown and grab the spatula at the same time. Yep. Skips a little animation. Uh, you'll see here he's about to jump into this cardboard box. Uh, these cardboard boxes usually, or they always come in pairs. Usually there's one at the beginning of an area and one at the end. And um, those are just there to prevent like backtracking and stuff. Um, you can warp between them. And typically in most levels, you can just open the one at the end of the level without opening the first one and we'll just let you jump in anyway. And um, those will be used a lot throughout the run whenever we're doing a level backwards. We will get to the end of an area, jump in the box, and then move on to the next area like we are right now. This is another level we're going into that's just heavily trivialized by that tech, just being able to pause and after you grab spatula and warp to where you collect the mission. Actually, this is one of those areas that looks really, really nice in the remake. If you guys played the Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated that came out just around a year and a half ago, yeah, that was uh, the remake for this game that somehow happened. It's kind of crazy that it even did. Yeah. Yeah, Goo Lagoon Caves looked believe. very good in that game as well. Great graphics. Who would have mm -hmm. known? Like, this, this game really just came back into popularity so quickly. Yeah, so we've got another little setup right here. He's actually going to ramp a bubble bowl shot off this awning here at just the right angle, and if it does work, it will hit an invisible button on the other side of this castle wall. So you'll see if the island is on the other side right here, which it is, nice. The shot was successful. So that actually skips yet another toll clam, as I mentioned earlier. We've got a lot of different things we can do to avoid paying those tolls and watching the cutscenes that there come along. There are actually along. so many ways of doing that, yeah. but much like most things, there are like five different ways of skipping every spatula, and that's the current fastest for our route right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we actually have another method of vertical momentum storage right here, you know, the super jump glitch that you saw earlier. Basically, by standing on top of this bowl and then launching another bowling shot, it will slingshot the ball that he's standing on towards SpongeBob's hand, and that will displace him super quickly. And if he pauses right when that happens and warps, he can do a super jump like he just did, and he basically just skipped a very large portion of the rooftops level. Very clean, by the way. That was, that was well done. Yeah, that was good. It's another really finicky yes. trick that can be I, I can't believe the spatula is so... <laughs> oh. Okay. I can't believe the spatula is still on the run after all these years. Like, it, it, we, we were doing it as SpongeBob for a little bit during the early SBA days, but now we're back to doing it as Sandy because of the VMS tech. By the way, we got a donation time if you All right, one. sounds good. good we have $10 from One Winged Absol who says, Awesome to see Battle for Bikini Bottom back, GDQ. I'm so proud to have been part of the community for almost a year. Good luck, Shift, and hi, Jared and Shoy. What's up, Hello. Absol? How you doing? Hello. The boys are here. We are. All right, something a little important to note here. The reason that he enters these taxi pads weirdly is because if he can actually get into the call zone while the cutscene is playing, he can just skip past the cutscene. Saves a second or two. Just a little yeah, optimization. Yeah, doing that a few times. You know what? For the fans. Oh, yeah. The nice little Easter egg of the bus Anybody like SpongeBob season one? Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Uh, uh, so this glitch My mom right here. got me uh, an animated cell as a gift recently. Just love those things. Oh, They're is that the one it was? Nice. Yeah, one of them. Oh, that's sick. They are um, a little cool piece of history of the shows. You guys should definitely look into that if you're into collectibles. Animated cells from 90s TV shows. Very cool stuff. Big SpongeBob yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, so similarly to what you just saw and some of the other uh, sliding bashes, this is going to follow the same suit where he's just going to take damage and use that momentum. Just to skip across some big gaps, this level is actually going to be played in unintended order now. And a lot of this stuff completely eliminates a ton of the casual runtime of Rock Bottom because it's kind of so all over the place. But that's what makes it a good level. It's kind of like up to your own interpretation a lot of the times. So you can kind of just do whatever you yeah. find to be possible. That's, that's probably one of the levels that made me eventually want to speed run in general. I'm just like deep, deeply seated in my head as a kid, like you can really just like platform however you want in these older games. Just yeah. Skip stuff. Just outsmart the game. It's just fun, and the devs obviously knew you could, but they still let you. No invisible walls everywhere, you know? Yeah. Alright, nice. Alright, we got time for one donation, actually. Sounds so. good. 
We have $50 from Kuna C. Kunha, who says, Hey Shift, started watching your streams after your first day cube run, and it's been amazing to see how far the community has come since then. It's great to see this game back in GDQ, show everyone why it's the best speed game out here. <laughs> hey, love to see that passion. Thank you so much, man, for everything. We're actually trading in our Chuck E. Cheese tokens right now for some golden spatulas, and this is going to get us up to the 40 mark, which will allow us to fight the second boss to obtain the cruise bubble, which is going to be used for the iconic glitch that you will... Well, you already, you already know what it is. Come on. It's 2022. You guys know what it is. But if you don't, get ready. So yeah, bad. and uh, just a minor correction on what you just said. At Chuck E. Cheese, you actually trade in the tickets for prizes, not tokens. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I actually, I think they, they, do, they do a card swipe now, right? Like, they do the card swipe to save paper. Yeah, kind of cringe. Yeah, it's kind of sus. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, so, uh, much like, uh... Much like Robo Sandy, this this boss is also going to follow the same three hits per phase formula. This is Robo Patrick. Uh, it's going to have additional attack mix-ups in every phase. This first phase, very, very simple. He's going to attack you with toxic ice cream and then have a little 10-second spin cycle. Afterwards, you'll be able to hit him. So it's just, you know, pretty straightforward. Actually, if you want to squeak in a donation right here, you definitely have time. All right, we have $25 from Reds and Blues, who says, Hey, Shift, I've been watching you for years now. And to see you at GDQ again, it's so awesome. I love SpongeBob. And to see someone so passionate about one of the best 3D platformers ever made, and it just so happens to be SpongeBob, your genuine love for this game is the reason I keep coming back. Love you, Shift. Two million, here we come. So happy to be almost closing on that two million, too. Thank you so much, man. You know, it's funny because, like, you would expect a SpongeBob game, especially after the um, the humble beginnings of Revenge of the Flying Dutchman and some of the older <laughs> PS1 stuff. Love that game. We, um, it's, it's kind of a miracle that we even got this, and the devs were so passionate about it. They put in 60-hour work weeks just to make this game perfect. Some of them said their biggest regret was they just couldn't work harder on it. And that's just that's just the kind of passion that it's 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 weird. There are some languages that kind of transcend literal language, right? I think that just the passion that they put into the game just kind of leaks into all of us. We all want to put that kind of passion into it, even without knowing, you know? Yeah. It's kind of beautiful. It is. We've actually been in touch with the devs of the original game quite a bit. Even the original artists who worked on the textures and the composer who created the soundtracks. Also, shout outs to Sheriff and Chicho for going through the trouble, the painstaking trouble, to <laughs> help the, the original composer find his original discs and masters for the original soundtrack. So we got the highest quality versions of those now, not compressed to the Xbox disc. So. Very happy. There, there's there are so many components of this game speedrunning community other than just speedrunning. Yeah. We've also got a modding community that's really awesome too. Very intertwined with the speedrunning community. Uh, shout out to Igor Sebro. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. I really hope I did. He created the fan-made level editor Industrial Park, which, named after this level actually, is used to. Well, edit levels and look into the game and find glitches. We, we used that to find the skee-ball glitch you found earlier. And, and funny enough, uh, that level editor was actually repurposed by the studio that created the remake to import the levels to scale into Unreal Engine. So just a little touch of the community helping out there and just getting involved with, uh, with the remake as well. Not just the fact that I was able to go and QA it for a little bit too, but we've all been a little bit involved, the, the old devs and the new devs, and we're really looking forward to the next SpongeBob game too, SpongeBob and Cosmic Shake, the spiritual successor, so to speak, of this game that was made almost two decades ago. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be sick. Yeah, so here we are in phase three. This is actually a very, very crucial point in the run. So Robopat can actually only land in designated areas around the arena's edge, and you'll see that right now. So Shift is actually going to be standing in pretty precise spots along the conveyor belts to try and manipulate the way that Robopat spins, and that allows us to not perfectly predict where he's going to land, but it does make the prediction a lot more consistent and a lot easier because it eliminates the entire backside of the arena. So there is a lot going on here as well. Some more AI manips. Yeah. This strat is so clever, but I, I cannot even overstate how clever this strat is. 
You know, the original video for this strat was like a 30 minute video of uh, Alex97 testing it just over and over again just to prove like his theories about it. Just brute force. Really horse. great strat after that gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, as we approach the end of the boss fight here, uh, as soon as we defeat him, we will be awarded the Cruise Bubble Power Up. And um, not only is that power up useful for doing uh, casual parts of the run, just like stuff that's intended by the game, but it'll also be very useful for a lot of crazy glitches and skips that we're about to do later on, including the <laughs> the DVD player strikes again. It's <laughs> <That was> terrible. <laughs> Including oh, the man. iconic <laughs> cruise boost trick, which we're getting into right now. So, when activated on the same frame, the cruise bubble actually interrupts the bubble bowl, causing the animation to cancel, but maintaining the momentum that you gain from that. So this is going to store as a new force of speed on SpongeBob, pushing him forward constantly, even when there's no inputs, uh, you know, of movement being inputted. So this also mobilizes stationary moves like slams and bashes, as, as you've just seen. Uh, that can be used to, you know, climb walls, cross large gaps. And it's important to note that the frame perfect inputs do need to be done twice with a good strafe angle so that you can actually store solid speed. Yeah, it's kind of like wave dashing where you got to make sure your angle is good to get a, a long wave dash. Shout out to the melee community, by the way. Yeah, and uh, those guys. we're coming up to a very iconic trick here as well known as Fast Nut. Uh, a classic run killer and just a very difficult trick overall. Sorry. A little bit early. It is a finicky, okay. very precise trick, so... Uh, no indication of which frame you hit either. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so, uh, what basically just happened there, it's um, sort of similar to the one-frame triple jumps that Jared explained earlier. Uh, but this time, instead, we're utilizing the grounded frame between a spin and slide animation. And um, by bashing on that frame, you get a lot of momentum and height from the slide. And uh, it lets us skip all the way to the acorn to grab that special. Fast nut, man. <laughs> I remember grinding that for five hours a day, like five years ago. Now it's back in the run. Classic. Great, Nothing Rick. is out of play in this game. It takes a lot of skill to stay on top of it all. Yeah. Speaking of skill, we've got another very difficult trick coming up here. Uh, this is known as a ledge cruise boost. It's a variation of the cruise boost glitch. Nice. First try, that's great. Um, basically, by doing the cruise boost input while SpongeBob is falling down a short ledge, you actually store extra momentum from the falling. And as you can see, this cruise boost is much faster than the other ones he's been getting. And um, typically, these can take a couple tries because they are very precise. But the time you save from getting the faster cruise boost is definitely worth it. Yeah, it's kind of just crazy that stuff like this is even possible. Like, cruise boosting itself was just groundbreaking because of how fast you could go, and now there's so many different spots in this game. Yeah. And, and just stuff like, what, what even is this? What are we doing? Yeah. What are, yeah. What, stuff like we're just this doing this. Crazy. And the run's just full of it. <laughs> just, <laughs> what are we doing? Just gliding over the fight, no problem, you know. Yeah, there's so many examples of interesting stuff that don't even get to see, like, the light of day in any percent run. So it's just, you know, there's so much tech in this game. It's just really impressive to see all the stuff that people have found over the years. Even since the last time this run was in GDQ, like, the game has changed so much. It's this, just the game's engine in general is just so smooth and so fun. I've been I've been so fascinated by it for years. Like, how is a game like this just so much fun to play? At like a low skill barrier and a high skill barrier, it's like it just feels so smooth. Even shout out to Sky Wise, by the way, for kind of jump starting the whole uh, fan made mod stuff. BFBB Mix, another game that has a speed run as well. So one of our first ROM hacks, people speed run that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for this next trick right here, Shift is going to be lodging SpongeBob in this crack in the ground. And when he gets in, the game is going to try to squeeze him out very quickly. So if he does a cruise boost input within a two-frame window while he gets squeezed, as he did, nice job. Uh, he actually captures the displacement speed with a bowl boost and he can fly straight to the end of this slide. This is still very missable, but because it's a two-frame window, we have one in 30 rather than one in 60. Yeah, so basically free. Yeah, basically free. Just hit the trick, bro. Yeah, you know, just instead of 130th, it's from 60th, excuse me, I can't even. <laughs> it's so, it's so hard to talk and play this game. It's, there's so much happening. So much happening. <laughs> but yeah, but I like how just like, you know, 130th is like easy mode for all the other stuff we got going on here. So. Yeah. Oh, God. 
There's just so much. Yeah, so we've actually got another ledge cruise boost coming up right here, this time in Goo Lagoon. Uh, this one he has to get within the first couple tries here in order to make a cycle. Nice. Okay, okay. Uh, be good enough. Uh, but yeah, these kids that are floating on these balloons, we have to save them oh. by popping the balloons. Uh, he did miss the first one, which is unfortunate, but he should be able to recover. Um, but yeah, getting that cruise boost in the first couple tries is very crucial for this. And uh, yeah, we can just sit back and enjoy the fast cruise boost speed. Yeah, as you can see, even him not getting that like right on the first try, like that still could have very well worked, but it's such a tight cycle. So doing an LCV, which is already difficult as it is, and then mixing that with all this movement that you see. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's such a lot. Oh, got it. Got it. it can be a rough segment. You barely touched that. <laughs> that was close. Yeah, it's going, <laughs> going for a backup because, um, I couldn't quite hear the audio cue, so I went for the other pillar. There's a little, little tiny, little tiny thing, but yeah, that's just how precise this game is. Like every little position matters just so much. Should have time for a donation right now if you've got one. Yeah, this level's pretty, I do. Pretty cool on uh, time. Californium donates two hundred and fifty dollars, saying, "Hey, shift." Glad to see you back at GDQ. Oh. You will get the 43 pretty soon. Love your content, Sincere's, and glad about what impact you've had on the Battle for Bikini Bottom community. Continue your awesome work. Pagman. It's kind of crazy that there even is a community, no, man, so man, I'm man. still shocked by it. Yeah, a very like, nice community. When we started, Jared, like, when you, you played this game a tiny bit before I did, too. Mm -hmm. Like, just a little bit. Yeah, respect mm -hmm. your elders. <laughs> you guys should definitely yeah. be respecting them. Yeah, let's... Okay. <laughs> let's calm down. <laughs> Alright, so we're actually running past that spatula. There's a reason for that. We'll come back and get it later, so you'll see that. Yeah, and uh, we're coming up on the third boss fight in the run here. This one's different from the other ones, because we can actually completely skip it by touching this debug trigger out of bounds here. Touching it oh, immediately wow. kills the oh, boss, wow. and... Um, by bowling into that gate there while collecting the spatula, he can actually save a little bit of time if he had gotten a one frame, but <laughs> Is time moving faster or is it just me? I think it's moving faster for sure. Yeah, this is oh, already very, very fast. Yeah. Already in the Maybe it's your gameplay. <laughs> no. Doubt it. No, that Doubt this it. is not no, this is not, not very fast. If it was but my gameplay. It's been a good time. <laughs> yeah, if it was my gameplay, yeah, it'd be different. Yeah, you're embarrassing yourself. Yeah, I don't think so. But. I think Shoiki route could have saved this one. Okay, well. <laughs> That's a very nice button shot, by the way. Yeah, nice cool. shot. Nice shot. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, right here, right. we're actually coming up on one of the hardest and longest spatulas in the route. Uh, this is the ballroom puzzle. I played this game as a kid. You probably remember it. It is notorious for being a very difficult physics-based level, just dealing with the jank of the ball and all the crazy stuff you have to do on like the timer and it's just a very difficult level and he's gonna hop back in there <laughs> all right now we're gonna go back and we're gonna get that spatula that we skipped earlier as i mentioned so since we've hit all four of the buttons we can grab that spatula and using our cruise boost momentum it will carry us back and we should run into the other one there nice. you go nice double all right, we're jumping in right to another LCB right here. So this one is actually going to be used to glide out of bounds underneath the stage. So we'll see if you can get this. There you go. This might, this might work. I think you're good. This nice. is such a finicky. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So the goal here is, pretty slow. is going to be to touch another debug trigger. Uh, this one is actually in physical form as a purple shiny object, and this is gonna trick the game into thinking that we have collected all six of the pieces of artwork. So we can just grab that spatula now and just not have to do that. Yeah. Wow, that was... Oh, that was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> all the weird stuff happens in Marathon, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's just the classic, well, I've never seen that before. <laughs> is that I've a never seen this before. Remember the rising sponge glide in Kelp? I've never seen this before. Uh, the, and the camera lock here as well. Wow. That was crazy. Yeah. This level, by the way, is extremely difficult to play optimally. Like, it is 
very, very tough. Oh, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There is a potential one frame cancel there where you can enter the level and press R on the same frame to collect the spatula and avoid watching the animation. But what makes it so tough is that the LCB speed is so variant that it kind of mix mixes up your timing a little bit when yeah. you're trying to go for it. You have to really be careful about your spacing, be very aware of how fast you're going. So on a run like this where the speed was just so strange, it would have been pretty crazy if that worked. Yeah. And uh, as you probably noticed, this level is pretty crazy as well. Uh, he was able to clip through that laser wall by getting a ledge grab animation and then also did a nice little damage boost. And uh, right here, he'll be able to jump on top of the laser wall because you are invincible for a short amount of time after collecting a spatula so you can get that sock pretty quickly. Nice job. Yeah, we got a little skip here, um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I'd say we got time for a donation. Okay. We have $5 from Kalis the Kobold, who says, Hey Shift, Jared and Shoy. Great to see you back at GDQ. Can't wait to see SpongeBob defeat the giant robots, Brain, and looking forward to my own first full mm. game run soon. Nice. Very nice, man. Very, very, very happy nice. to have you playing this game. Yeah, Thank you for the support. You know what's so cool about this game, too? Everybody who runs it, they all do different sock spatulas, routes, and whatnot. Everything's fast now. All these spatulas are all so fast. And you can just choose which ones you want, and there's very little time for your preference. And it's, it's very, very cool how how many levels you can go through. Yeah. It's just never ending. Indeed. All right, so here we are coming up on the Kelp Forest. This level has remained pretty similar throughout time. We kind of figured this level out pretty quickly. Uh, so immediately just using our cruise boost, we can just enter the exit to the final area because this level runs in a big loop. And now we're actually just going to play this entirely backwards as well. Yeah, very similar to Goo Lagoon where we get to the last part of the level immediately and then just go backwards through the boxes and loading zones. Or not loading zones, but the warp menu and all that stuff. We'll be seeing a lot I've of that. i comments about how Ooh, nice people control. are that we can just skip this also. Yeah, nice out control dude. A little bit of tech. Yeah. You know, that trick was actually found entirely by accident. I was just doing a run, and I accidentally pressed L on the same frame that I touched the spatula, and I was like, what just happened? I can, I can control myself. So <laughs> the reason why that happens is because SpongeBob is programmed to face the camera. We got Hey Kid coming up here right what? away. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey Kid. There, there it is. is. <laughs> All right. Thank you, by the way. I would have forgotten that. <laughs> so as I was saying, SpongeBob is programmed to face the camera whenever he does the spatula celebration, as you've been seeing, which because you're cruise boosting and you're moving without actually giving input, you can still move around while he's collecting the spatula. So because the L control unlocks your camera by doing the one frame, you can actually turn your camera and move and walk around while you're collecting the spatula without actually moving. It's very cool looking. Very, very cool. But that would also be the reason why you are spinning. You might be curious, actually, like, why is he spinning in circles when he gets the spatula? And that's just because he has to face the camera, but the camera's zooming in. It just gets, gets a little weird, so lots of cool stuff like that. For sure. Yeah. He just doesn't know what to do. All right, so that's going to yeah, do it so for help. Just went through the whole level in reverse. Yeah, no. Such a quick level. I can see this a lot of my childhood just done in two minutes. Yep. <laughs> All right, so here we are coming up on the last area of the game, Dutchman's Graveyard. But first, we must pay a visit to our friend Shoihi behind the Krusty Krab. If we hit him, he'll give us a sock. Yeah, I was actually wondering where that went. Yeah, you're embarrassing yourself. Yeah, well, okay, dude. The graveyard. <laughs> God. <laughs> we've, we've, got, we've got a little bit of uh, some cool cruise boost movement here. It's pretty self-explanatory stuff, you know. Let's get a donation. Yep. Yeah, we have. All right, we have one hundred dollars from any per sent fan that says, "Great to see you back at GDQ Shift. Thank you and GDQ for supporting such a worthy cause. Have a great run." Thank you, man. Oh. Enjoy the show. That's right. Yeah, you can see that. That. Oh, I was gonna say that cage right there is gonna play a little crucial role later on in the run. There was actually, uh, back in the day, one of the hardest tricks that we've ever had in this game was involving that cage, and it was right at the end of the run. Indeed. 
be. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Good old GCC. Yeah, I would have been doing it if uh, if I was doing the marathon run, but you know. I yeah, understand. Same. Yeah, you you would have gotten it first try too. Absolutely, I would have absolutely gotten it first try for sure. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Me too, for sure. Well, let's not get too carried away. Uh, you, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is another big skip, kind of like the cow bungee skip in the beginning of the game. You grab the spatula, you can just warp to it and skip half the level. Yeah. And this is a tough level casually. I'll just throw that out there. Like people really got stuck on the wall jumps in these. Oh yeah. Very, very grueling. We're doing some movement here to actually skip those moving wall jumps that you might recognize if you played this game as a kid. Very, very tough stuff for a six-year-old with a controller to do. <laughs> yeah, because you can't just mash. You have to, like, wait a little bit. It's yeah, you gotta actually space your jumps. And Rehydrated, they kind of made it more scripted so you can just mash it. Yeah. So uh, right here, we're going to be activating the cannons on the Flying Dutchman's ship. And, uh, this movement. yeah, it's a really cool looking segment with all these bashes and stuff. Uh, in a casual playthrough, you would have to go over to the robot ship and destroy the laser cannons. But, uh, for whatever reason, if you activate the cutscene to fire the cannons, no matter what, it'll just open up the warp for you so you can just warp straight to the Flying Dutchman afterwards. Nice backup, by the way. Yeah, that's good. I actually think we could probably squeeze a donation in right here, right? Uh, maybe. Yeah, doing the yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. We've got time for sure. Uh, we have twenty-five dollars from Bubba, who says, "Been watching Shifts runs for a few years. He's Oof. one of the hardest working people I've ever seen. Glad you can show off your skills at GDQ." Oh. Thank you, man. We're gonna be doing runs right after this one, actually, all day. <laughs> so, hopefully, that forty-three happens at some point. Today's the day. Ye old well, ride the momentum. Don't put that pressure on me. No, man. ride the momentum, man. There's so many momentum tricks in this game. You gotta ride out your own momentum. Right here, of we've got our second to last boss fight. We're doing another debug thing. There's a lot of debug triggers left in this game, so usually the hand would prevent you from getting up here, but we don't have the hand, so we can just do that. Touch the debug trigger, and that's done. Yeah, the devs have told us they thought that nobody was going to reach these things, and, you know, they're probably right, but we're speedrunners, and we want to, so we're just going to find a way. Yeah, so this is home of, again, one of the hardest tricks that we've ever had in the run, but now it's kind of just a joke. You can see how easy it is right there. It's, it's so funny, man. <laughs> I can't... It's just the, the, the historical context behind this cage and the fact that you can just do that is just hilarious The fact it took us so long. Final sock train, by the way. Yeah, yep. that was our 75th spatula, so now we can finally go and fight Robo Spongebob. Yeah, we saw this door earlier, we finally get to go in, and we're nearing the end. Defeat so. the giant mattress with light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> so right off the bat, to explain this fight as quick as I can, he's going to use some invincibility frames on spawn in to take the first hit. Then he's going to hit Robo Plankton and then do a precise bowling shot right here that prevents Plankton from doing his own little animation. And then using the platform momentum, he can launch himself into the air, hit another debug trigger, and now we're into the brain. And uh, I can't think of a more fitting way to finish a BFB speedrun than with some nice cruise boost movement out of bounds. Uh, so basically he's going to clip into the brain here and skip basically the entire fight and break these three fuses and time will be on the third fuse being broken. A little risky clip this right here. Very risky, yeah. yeah. You might get a... Oh, we got the hey, soft hey, lock! We got the soft lock! Let's the go. classic oh, soft lock. There's your risk. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to go back in there. I'm kind of happy it happened. We get, we get a little more time to talk. <laughs> that clip says, yeah. what, four seconds? To two seconds. Two. Oh wow. Yeah, that's that's big in any percent though. Yeah. 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 Seeing this, seeing all this stuff done now compared to like what we used to do is just amazing to me. It, it, this game has come so far. Yeah. There we go. There it is. Right. So time's coming up. And, and time. time. Nice. Good job, man. <laughs> nice run. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun showing everything off. Yeah. So you're probably <laughs> thinking. How deep does the rabbit hole go? Where can I go for more? The first thing you should do, you should go search How Speed Running Revived, Battle for Bikini Bottom, or just Battle for Bikini Bottom, BFB, any percent, world record history, speed run history, any variation of that. You'll know what you're gonna click on. You'll enjoy it. 
it's, it was made by myself and a lot of my other friends and, and people who work with me on the game. And it's very entertaining and informative. You'll probably notice it's quite a bit different than most of the history videos you've watched before, but I'm sure you will enjoy it just as much. I'd also like to dedicate this run to our, our friends, Gertis and Mr. Marowak, who tragically passed not so long ago. Uh, Marrow was scheduled to have a run in the marathon back in 2019. Unfortunately, his passing was very untimely. And Gertis, unfortunately, he left us due to cancer-related complications very much earlier than expected. He, he left us about a week before the remake came out. So that was really tragic. He, he really wanted to watch the game and play with us. So. And he loved this community so much. Um, they both did, Mero and Gertis. They were great examples, very generous and kind people. And they set, they set a very high bar for us to aspire to reach kind of our maturity and the kindness that we spread to everybody else who loves to play this game. So I really appreciate all they did for us. And we'll miss them. For sure. I also, oh, I got to mention the 100 under 1. So, uh, in Gertis's honor, because I wanted to do something for him, but it took a little bit of time to figure out what would honor his legacy and also be a good way to help people get into the game, because that's what he loved. He just wanted to see the community grow. I set up a challenge last year where I challenged the community to get 100 people on the Battle for Bikini Bottom leaderboards under one hour before the end of last year, and we made it. We made it to 102. So I ended up donating $2,400 to Cancer Research, and that was a really great thing that we set up, and I'm really happy that the community was motivated to, to get into that and get into the game and give it a try, because it's what they would have wanted. And Absolutely. That's... Yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy that this is all panning out, so it's just great. Five years later, where's the time gone? Yeah, so if you guys, of course, want to help prevent cancer, of course, get your donations in. We're almost at two million right now, so if you guys want to help benefit the Prevent Cancer Foundation and, you know, support the runners and the cause, then make sure you get your donations in. We appreciate everybody who donated towards us. Uh, during this run, who had nice words to say about so us. So many nice donations. Um, yeah, so just road to two million. I know we can get there, so keep them coming. We're so close. <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome commentating with my buddies on here. And we hope you guys enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for watching. And until then, see you later. Yeah, thanks Thank you so much for having me on. Oh. All right, thank you, Shift, for that fantastic run of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Lee's donates $10, saying, so cool to see this game at GDQ again. Good luck, Shift. All right, folks, we are going to take a quick break. We will be right back.
All right, folks, we are now heading on over to the interview desk, Spike Vegeta with Prevent Cancer. And welcome back, everyone, to Awesome Games Done Quick 2022. I am Spike Vegeta, and I'll be your interviewer for this segment, as I am honored to be joined by a member of the Prevent Cancer Foundation, Dr. Alicia Allen. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I have to ask you, my sister's name is Alicia. Can I call you Alicia or would you rather go by Dr. Allen? No, no, please do call me Alicia. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it just makes, I'm like, oh, hey, it's Alicia. I was lucky to be on for this one. But I want to talk to you first off and just something very simple. Obviously, Prevent Cancer Foundation, we've been working with them for over 10 years now and you work with them yourself. What was kind of your initial inspiration to start working with the company? Yeah, well, so... I grew up in in rural Minnesota, where at a time when smoking was was really very common, and I watched my mom struggle with cigarette smoking all through my life, and had both my uh, grandpas as well as an aunt die from smoking related causes, including cancer. And um, so, you know, I it wasn't necessarily because of that, although that gave it more um, kind of more personal impact for me. But I have been looking to see how I can help women quit smoking, actually for almost two decades now, I started uh, looking at how the menstrual cycle impacts uh, quit smoking in women. And, Mm -hmm. and that's really what started this line of research I'm working on. So when I saw Prevent Cancer Foundation's call for um, funding additional research projects, I I just jumped right on it and put in a a proposal. Wow. That's awesome to hear. I'm glad you're getting in doing something that obviously means a lot to you. And I'm sorry you had to deal with that growing up. Uh, I do want to talk about, again, your uh, specific uh, title, I guess, in this is you work in cancer risk reduction and target your target audience are women of re- reproductive age. So you want to tell me a little bit about that, those specifics there? Yeah, happy to. So Uh, Well, first of all, the reason to target women of reproductive age is, uh, I think there's three reasons there. So first of all, women in general, as compared to men, um, have a more difficult time quitting smoking, and they also are more likely to suffer from the harmful effects of quitting smoking. So that, you know, if a woman and a man smokes, the woman is more likely to get cancer compared to the man, generally speaking. So, So that's one reason. The other big reason is is women and mothers in particular are the primary source of secondhand smoke exposure to children, which is, again, another thing that can cause cancer. Um, And the third thing, which is kind of the the glimmer of hope, is if we can help women quit smoking by the time they turn 40, 90 percent of the smoking related morbidity and mortality can be prevented. So, you know, if we can catch them early, then we can avoid all of that and also protect their families as well. So that's why why uh, I focus on the women of reproductive age. Yeah, about to say throwing a lot of amazing stats at us right there. Like you said, ninety percent. Again, all the it's in the title, the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Amazing stuff right there. Beautiful work that you're doing right now. And I want to talk a little bit. You've even got a research project. You got a title for it right here: a novel approach to help women of reproductive age quit smoking. And how long has that been? I guess a project for years now. Uh, yeah, good question. So, like I kind of mentioned when I started this. Uh, research. I was an undergrad student and quite frankly was just looking for a job, any job, wanted sure, to make of some, <laughs> some money. Uh, and, and what's Everyone hired, in the chat gets that right now. We are all with you. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I was hired on where my job was to um, basically recruit women who wanted to quit smoking into a study where they were studying how the menstrual cycle mm-hmm. influences quit efforts. And It was one of those things where the more I learned about it, the more curious I became. So I kind of just dug in more and more. Um, So, you know, that was several years ago now. And what I've what I've come to believe in my hypothesis for that's driving this project is that if basically if we're able to stabilize the menstrual cycle or or kind of almost remove it for a few months, that would help women quit smoking. And so the way we do uh, propose looking at that in this study is by giving women Depo-Provera, which is a common birth control shot. And okay. basically what it does is blocks ovulation um, so women can't get pregnant, but also makes it so they don't have a menstrual cycle for three months. And so I'm hoping if we kind of take away those hormonal changes in the menstrual cycle, it gives women kind of a level playing field to help them quit smoking. So, so that's the novel approach we're looking at here. Wow. 
Unbelievable stuff right there. I hope your research eventually, you know, is fruitful in the end and allows you to help a lot of women avoid, obviously, this ter- ter- this terrible, terrible thing called cancer for years and years to come. I do want to ask you before I let you get out of here, obviously, we've been talking about your work right here, but it is a week-long event based on video games as well. That's 50% of what we're doing this week. And I want to ask you, you got any background in video games? Well, you know, I grew up playing video games. Primarily, Sonic the Hedgehog was my favorite when I was little. <laughs> That's the two straight interviews I've had with you have had with all of you talking about oh, Sonic really? the Hedgehog. That's the popular one. That's awesome. I love to hear it. Yeah, it was really fun. But now I have a, a seven-year-old who is uh, really into well, lots of video games, Roblox and Minecraft. But the one I play uh, with him is uh, Mario Kart. So we have a lot of fun. Let's go, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> Does he have a favorite? Do they have a favorite character? they like to play as you know not really i i like to do uh you know the the baby princess peach on her little motorcycle oh, yeah. bike so that's my favorite he likes to uh shake it up and do kind of switch it up yeah, yeah, yeah. learn all the yeah, different yeah. tier lists and everything <laughs> i love to hear it that's awesome yeah. well uh dr alan alicia i want to thank you so much for joining us here as part of agq 2022 all of your work with the prevent cancer foundation beautiful stuff you're talking about right there i hope you're able to provide relief and a better life for just thousands of people out there maybe millions of people out there for years and years to come and we thank you for all of your hard work yeah my pleasure thanks for having me and i i hope i can make that happen too thank you <laughs> thank you gonna send you by gonna send everybody back up to the front for more awesome speed runs here at agdq 2022 have a good day Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online powered by Twitch. We are getting very, very close to that 2 million mark, y'all. And I want to give an update to some of these incentives that we discussed before the SpongeBob run. Remember that not only are we pushing for number numerical goals but you can also add these incentives to your donations, so please do not forget to do so so we can meet these. Currently, right now, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, any percent run, is $33,185 out of $75,000. So again, if you would like to see that bonus any percent run of the Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, please be sure to get those donations in. And two Tetris the Grand Master incentives as well. We have 20G mode at max speed, $3,091 out of $75,000, and also a secret grade showcase for Tetris the Grandmaster. That's currently $7,958 out of $20,000. So again, if you would like to see all these fantastic incentives get met, please get those donations in and please remember to add those incentives to your donations. 72, I think, donates $5 saying, I am so happy to see Shift play Battle for Bikini Bottom and AGDQ. Skyways donates $30 saying, hey, Shift, stopping in for my juice reward by having the host acknowledge this donation. Greetings from Germany. Good luck on the run. Fred the Fish donates $50 saying, Fred the Fish here. I knew you would have never forgotten the pickles. Not with that many gold spatulas. All right, folks, I have been. Oh, wait, never mind on that. A few more donations here. $250 from Kavatica, who says, love watching GDQ with my husband and our friends. This event is a true love letter to gaming, and congrats to all the runners this week. Shansman donates $300 saying, I love watching AGDQ every year. Let's go runners and let's prevent cancer. What's the nerd? The Arch Wizard donates $20 saying, I've been watching runners destroy these games for so long and I'm finally donating for the first time this year. Good luck to the runners. It is imperative to advance at rapid pace.
Ariana Girl plays Denise $25 saying to 2 million and beyond. PM and Potato donates $500. No comment, but thank you very much for your donation. Lewis H. donates to $20 saying, looking forward to the Subnautica run. Absolutely. Anonymous donates $100 saying, third year watching GDQ and recently introduced my girlfriend to it and the concept of speedrunning. We really enjoy the event and the people. Looking to make a tra tradition and donate and support all who participate. Also, I am a huge Zelda fan, so this is going to the Link to the Past bonus any percent run. Let's break two million. All right, folks, I've been given the green light. Here is Salvador with Subnautica. Good luck and have fun.